period. Well, great. Here's a video. How are you doing, folks? You're very welcome. Thanks for um, tuning in. Thanks for, I suppose, choosing to watch my videos. As you can see here, this is my, my baby, um, a Belarus 52 Super, um, imported into Ireland in the early 70s, the early to mid 70s. I suppose to tell you a bit of the history of, the, I suppose to tell you the history of this tractor, I kind of have to start at the of the history of Belarus. Belarus originally, or Belarus, I'm going to call it Belarus, but Belarus tractors were originally formed after World War II, around 1948 in Minsk, in in the Ukraine, I suppose, in Russia. Um, I suppose, what can I say? It was originally a munitions factory um, where they made tanks and munitions for World War II. And after World War II had ended, Stalin at the time invested, I suppose at the time, probably millions of pounds or euros or sterling or dollars, whatever you want to call it, into the the Russians. They wanted their own tractor brand. And this is what they came up with. Well, not exactly this. Um, the first Belarus they built, they were on tracks. They were just kind of really and truthfully, they were converted um, army tanks. And then they came up with, in the 50s, they came up with what they would call a wheeled version. This is a wheeled version. And the first wheeled version of the Belarus or the Belarus tractor was actually a very close copy of a, kind of an international. And it kind of went on from there. And then they came up with this, which they call the MTZ-50 in kind of the late, the late 50s early 60s and of course then there was the mtz 50 which this is and then there's an mtz 52 which is four wheel drive um there was a company then formed in the uk and london it was called umo it was through an english consortium they call it of businessmen and a couple of russian businessmen that decided they were going to import belarus tractors into the uk and they went ahead and they brought him in. They were unveiled um, in the Smithfield show in 1971. Um, there were also, along with them, there was, I think Universal was in, was unveiled at the same show, it was, which was a copy of the Fiat tractor at the time. And um, I suppose they went from there. Then I suppose after that, U, UMO, UMO, um, looked for any agency in Ireland to go selling Belarus tractors and they found PMP, which PMP at the time was an insurance company that specialised in, at the time, it was, they were supposed to be a farmer or a farmer friendly insurance company. But PMP got the agency to sell Belarus or Belarus tractors and at the time they also had an agency for an Italian built load and shovel. I'm not too sure what the brand was, and they also had an agency for HiMac, HiMac excavators, which were built in the UK at the time. And um, I think they had 26 or 7 depots throughout Ireland. They had one in Tralee, if there's anyone familiar with Tralee, they had one there just where you might be familiar with where George Poff or PMPA was there. Um, on the Tralee, kind of Dingle, Bruneville Road, um, just barely outside the Tralee. Um, that's where they were based in Tralee. Now, um, like that, a lot of the, when the, the Belarus tractors went, a lot of them garages actually started selling um, FSOs and Lada cars, which were also, um, you could call them, kind of an Eastern European importation. Um, but anyway, they went from there, but I suppose some, as I do keep saying, some genius in um, PMPA's headquarters in Dublin or wherever their headquarters were at the time, decided it was cheaper to to buy a tractor and to scrap a tractor rather than to bring in parts. Now, anyone that knows tractors or cars or balers or anything knows it's the same things that go 
in a mall, it'll be a starter, it'll be a, an alternate or a dynamo, or it'll be a clutch or a gearbox, it'll be the same things that go in a mall. So they actually got an idea to scrap a few tractors, and that was their way of getting parts. Um, so this tractor was actually imported, it was brought into the depot in Tralee, and it was actually scrapped in the, in, this was the very early to mid 70s. Um, now PMP eventually went bankrupt and of course that's another thing when UMO gave the agency to PMP, PMP owned and all the dealerships throughout Ireland. So when PMP went all the dealerships went overnight. Now there was a few of them that kind of struggled on and lived on but to my knowledge the only kind of PMP dealership that is still around at the time, or there were dealers at the time, is Noel Clancy in Wicklow. His father was a PMPA dealer and uh, for Belarus tractors, Belarus tractors, and he, they still service, look after, maintain and sell uh, new Belarus tractors there in Wicklow. Of course, there's also Noel, or uh, Colm Keneally in Kilkenny as well. He sells a shot of Belarus tractors there as well. But, um, what else can I say to you? But they went from there when PMP went bankrupt. That was it. They, all the dealers closed. They just more or less closed overnight. And but going back to the the scrapping of the tractor, they scrapped this tractor. This tractor was actually scrapped. And a fellow in West Kerry by the name of Timmy Splan bought this tractor. He actually had three of them at one time, and he put it back going. I suppose in the probably the, the early 80s and he used it for a number of years at silage and at slurry and I was actually talking to a friend of mine recently he remembers one of Timmy's plans tractors it, it could even have been this one um, in a big drainage job just outside Tralee and his job and the tractor's job on this uh, on this job was drawing the, the red clay pipes um, if anyone knows of the of Tralee, it's there up by Belly C D Castle. Um, this tractor gave weeks and months drawing the red clay pipes to to uh, a big contractor doing a drainage job up there. But anyway, I suppose in the later eighties, then um, I suppose the tractor was parked up. It wasn't used or it just got outdated or whatever. And the tractor was more or less just parked and Timmy Splan passed away in the late 90s and the tractor was parked again for a number of years. And another friend of mine bought the tractor and he scrapped it again and he had it robbed for parts. There was no starter, there was, I think there was a couple of windows missing, the back, one of the back wheels were missing. There was a couple of more bits missing off it, and he sold it to uh, another, we'll call him a Belarus enthusiast, and which he put it back going. Now, when he got it, it was in fairly bad state, because going back about 10 or 12 years ago in Ireland, I suppose 09, 10, 11, there, thereabouts, we got some very, very bad, heavy, bad frost. It was going down to minus 30 at night in certain places. And when the, the cylinders inside the engine filled with water, in here you have four cylinders, um, they filled the water and they expanded with the frost and it burst the, the liners and it burst pistons and everything. And... Um, so he had to rebuild that. So this tractor more or less has a new engine and he put it back going. He was doing a bit of forestry work with it, but he has um, a couple more of them. So this was surplus to requirements. So I purchased this off him and they're just after Christmas, I suppose, in January 2022. Um, so that's how I ended up with it. Now, she's a very, very low hour tractor. She has, let me see if I can see in here. She has 2,705 hours on the clock. So now, just to give, I suppose, a quick walk around the tractor, like just, I suppose, excuse me, to compare this tractor to, we say a Ford or a Massey at the time. I think at the time, a Massey 165, I'm told, in, we say 1975, a Massey 165 was 4,000 pounds. Um, the 
four to five thousand was in and around the same and we'll say in 80 or 90 horsepower which this is 80 horsepower the equivalent john deere was nearly six thousand pounds this tractor was just uh, about three thousand one hundred and fifty pounds that was the the four-wheel drive version now there was in the 70s there was four versions available there was this one is the 50 super which is a two-wheel drive there was the mtz 52 super which was the four-wheel drive then there was a 40 uh which and then there was a 40a now the 40 and the 40a were actually not belarus tractors they were lipsticks i think they were <laughs> i have the pronunciation wrong lipstick lipstick tractors they were built in the ukraine and they actually had an air-cooled engine and they were a copy of a dites the engine is a very very close copy of a dites engine um there were your four options but the mtz 52 super was the the one with all the bells and whistles four wheel drive and it was just one three thousand one hundred or three thousand one hundred and fifty pounds at the time in 1975 compared to john deere which was six thousand the Ford 5000 and the F Massey Ferguson 165 were about uh, 4000. So this was this was without doubt value for money. Considering here inside in this, we call it a spindle. You have springs. They have front suspension. Um, most of them came with a compressor. You know, this one doesn't have a compressor. They have a reusable, rewashable oil filter. It's called a central fugal force. It, it spins around inside in it and it cleans the oil that way. Um, this is your diesel filter. You have external services, hydraulics, more hydraulics. This is this is your hydraulic tank. Um, here inside in the cab, you have your steering. That's for your lifts. Um, you have depth control and you have everything. Um, hand throttle. You have all your 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 external services for your lifts, your lift arms, hand brake. This is your your hydraulics and hydraulic pump. The only thing that's hard to get used to, and even I've driven Belarus with a long time, I find it hard to get used to the accelerator. It's it's in the middle of the floor. Um, that's kind of the thing I, I find hard to get used to. Now, here you have your your on your back wheels. They came weighted back wheels. Here you could screw in and out your wheel, or you could widen in and out your tractor. Very easy to do. You just loosen this stud, and you twist it here. Now some fella has it welded. They had a habit of loosening if this wasn't squeezed up right. Um, in the back, you had cam standard again as a pickup hitch. Um, you had a two-speed PTO shaft. I'm fairly certain the the 165s and the Ford 5000s and even the John Deere's at that time didn't have um, that. Your lift arms are powered up and down. Here again, you have um, external services again a tipping ram, and this is the you have a bench seat inside in the tractor. Now, the cab is a Duncan cab. I think Duncan cabs were made in Scotland. I'm not a thousand percent too sure on that. But the cab of these tractors are, they're, what shall I say, there's one way of getting in and there's one way of getting out. And that's kind of it. They, they are very, very kind of finicky. You have to get in a certain way and get out a certain way. No. This is the starter. This is a more modern, high-speed starter that's fitted. And this is obviously a newer battery tray. There would have originally been two 12-volt batteries back there under the seat. You can see the big ram there for the, the lift arms. Um, in here you have a, a strut. Uh, you have seat suspension. Um, the kind of easy start is not for this tractor. Um, hydraulic pump is in there. That's your hydraulic pump. That one. Um, gears in the floor, you have all your services, everything. Another thing that, that's two more external services. Another thing that Belarus or Belarus tractors had that nothing else had at the time, they came standard as four-wheel drive. Now, this is obviously two-wheel drive. But the four-wheel drive one, it had a thing on them. They probably had some kind of a very fancy name for it, but I don't know the fancy name. And what it was, was when the rear wheels would slip 
on you lose traction they they would automatically engage the 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 front wheels so there was three settings that i know of there was a setting that you could have it turned off there was a setting that you had it constant on and then there was another setting that it would slip and i think it would slip at about three percent now i suppose another bit of the history of belarus or belarus tractors um in 1984 they had their it was up somewhere up and around two million tractors produced. They reckon that they have about seven percent of the overall tractor market. Um, they're saying one in ten tractors throughout the world is is a Belarus. Um, they had three million tractors made and produced sometime in the the early nineties. Um, and they're still going. Now, if you search it up and look it up in your, I suppose, your, your search engines or the internet or whatever, um, they say that even to this moment, even to this right now, January, February 2022, um, they're producing somewhere in and about 80,000 tractors a year in the factory in Minsk. Now, their, I suppose, their, popul their, their popularity or their whatever in Ireland has gone down in the last number of years. Um, there was a major export on them. I don't think that that's so much anymore. Um, like just in 2015, from what I can find out, there was 121 Belarus tractors taxed for use on the Irish roads. No. I would say this tractor was never taxed. Probably never, ever, ever taxed. Um, I can tell you where it was with the last 25 years, and I don't think it was taxed over the last 25 years. Um, now, my plan is to tax it, insure it. We're going to carry it to a couple of road runs and a couple of shows. Um, there is a trailer there, if you watch one of my other videos. Um, there is a show, there's a silage day going to take place. It's getting a bit windy, I hope you can hear me. There's a silage day going to take place in Valencia Island in South Kerry on the 6th of August. So we're hoping to have a bit of body work and a bit of tidying up done to it and maybe a, a re-coat, a refresh coat of paint um, and take that silage trailer on the day there. Now, of course... Belarus or Belarus tractors also made implements, a frightening amount of implements. Um, they made everything from, uh, I'm just not even going to start, they made everything. But what they also sold in Ireland was muck spreaders, rear discharge muck spreaders. Now, I am looking for one, preferably a four ton, they are there. One inside in the hedge would be absolutely perfect. Um one that needs work something like that you might even fancy giving it to me which would be better again um so if you have one leave it in the comment below or if you used one or even let me know what your favorite tractor is i know we're all john deere's and masses and cases and everything but i prefer the oddball yokes i prefer things like this um something that is not the norm something that's Something's a bit unusual. Um, this I've always liked. I've always had a soft spot for Belarus or Belarus tractors. Let me know in the comment below what your what your favourite tractor is. If if money was no object and if you could just land down with a tractor tomorrow morning, let me know what it is. And also let me know if you have a Belarus muck spreader for me. Um, we'll get in touch. Um, they are there, they're out there, they have to be there. i leave a picture there, I'll put a picture at the end um, of a Belarus muck spreader. It's a picture of, a, of a, a brochure. There is a couple of videos of them on YouTube, so maybe give a look at one of them. Um, they were sold from around 1977 right up until around 1993, from what I can understand. I thought they were only sold for about three years, but no, they were sold for a lot longer than that. They sold tankers they sold everything in fact one of their tankers was their vacuum tanks in the early 90s was a kind of a self-loader it had a pipe would just come out itself and you would drop the pipe into the ground with hydraulics they were very very advanced um but they kind of never moved on in fact 
this tractor was probably built in the mid 60s um, and they never changed a whole pile right up until 1993 it's more or less the same tractor with different clothes, different whatever, right up until 1993. That's when they, they changed their design again. Now, in recent years, they've had a massive investment through the through the Minsk, through um, Minsk, through Russia, through whatever, into the tractor, into the plant, because it is a massive employer. It's actually one of the largest factories in the world. It's it's on the bucket list that I'm going to go there and I'm going to check it out. I'd love to go there. Actually, we had plans and going there only for COVID, but hopefully, who knows, maybe next year we could we could get out there and um, we might get to see the factory if things don't go pear-shaped in the meantime again. So hopefully we'll be looking for that and, um, yeah, we'll check it out. Actually, another thing is... They're actually still making this tractor to the best of my knowledge and it can be bought over in Eastern Europe and Pakistan and places like that for an awful less smaller amount of money than what you can buy a new tractor here. That's kind of it. That was a look at this was the history of Belarus tractors in Ireland. So leave a comment if you think I'm right or wrong. Maybe you might have known something about it. Maybe you worked in them in the 70s and 80s. Maybe your grandfather, uncle, father. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I like that. Let me know what your favourite tractor is. All right, guys, tune in for the next one. And um, we next, I suppose, we next video we'll do is we'll give a look inside in it and the controls and we'll carry it for a drive. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Period. Well, great. Here's a video.